Okay, so now we have compiled the keylogger. We have it, it's right there. Now would be a good time to have a regular USB lying somewhere around. And we're gonna, for the time being, we're gonna go ahead and minimize the virtual machine because we will need to create a server from where the keylogger will be downloaded once the USB is plugged into a machine. So here's how it works. You basically plug a USB in and there's a script that runs and that script uh, checks whether the connection is enabled or not. If it, the machine is not actually connected to the net, it will sleep and the script will run at boot time as well. But if the machine is connected to the internet, it will download the keylogger immediately. Otherwise, it will just wait until the keylogger is actual, until the connection is established to the net, and then it will download the keylogger, set it to run at boot time, and it will destroy itself. Okay, so since we have compiled the keylogger, we need to set up a server from where we are going to download the actual keylogger. I have logged into the DigitalOcean where I usually create my uh, my machines in the cloud, my servers. But we're gonna go ahead and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and minimize that for now. First thing that we need to do is actually generate the RSEC keys. So I'm just gonna go ahead and clear the screen here and I'm not gonna do this as root, no need. Or at least I don't think that there is a need to do this as root. So I'm gonna go cd.ssh. Well, let me give you an absolute path. So home chronic.ssh ls and there is the id arsa and id arsa.pub. So I'm gonna go ahead and move ID Arsa to home chronic uh, documents. And I'm going to move the ID Arsa dot pub there as well. So I don't have anything listed here. Now, what I'm going to do is type in, those are my old keys, so just type in SSH. You'd, you're obviously not going to be moving these things if you don't have any other keys, but in case you do, that's what you need to do. So SSH, uh, key gen, and I'm gonna do dash T, and I, oops, dash T, and I need RSA. So press enter, enter the file in which to save the key. The default destination is fine. Passphrase, no need and it's gonna generate it, okay? So that's all you need to do. And now I have a new ID Arsa and I have a new ID underscore Arsa dot pub as well. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and clear the screen and do LL and I need to have the, uh, we're gonna need to have these keys. So if I do cat ID Arsa dot Pub, there we go. So it's right there. We will need to import these keys at at log uh, at the time uh, when we actually create the VM. But you won't be importing ID Arsa .pub. You will be importing ID underscore Arsa, which is your private key. Do not share, show, or distribute your private key with anyone. Uh, the private key that I'm showing you here and now will be destroyed upon the comp prior to actually publishing these videos. Okay, so no big deal. Uh, and let's go ahead and see what's in here. So let's go ahead and create a new droplet. I'm going to go ahead and select CentOS. Uh, pick the cheapest one. Or if you have hosting elsewhere, you can do this elsewhere. You don't need to do this on DigitalOcean. I do it here because of convenience. But you can do it anywhere, really. There is, there is The course requirement is not for you to actually create a hosting with DigitalOcean. You can create it anywhere you want. It, I don't care. It doesn't matter, really. As long as the server is functional for your purpose, uh, it's fine. So I'm just going to choose the closest one to me. So that would be Frankfurt. And I'm going to click on new SSH key. And now I will open up the console again. 
and oops and copy this RSA key. Make sure that it you copy only the part from where it says begin and end. So control shift C and then control V here. So this will be the RSA key imported here. Name uh, demo. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click add SSH key. Key invalid, we support, why is the key invalid? Uh, okay. No, nope. let's go ahead and add it one more time. Whoa, why? Please make sure that your key is valid. Hmm. Let me just go ahead and check this up again to make sure that I've copied the right portion of it. Oh, wait, what's the error again? Well, let's, let's go ahead and check this out. Oh my God. Oh, this was, uh, this was bad. <laughs> this is a, uh, this is a huge mistake on my part. I knew I was going to mess something up. Anyway, uh, of course, you're not going to be putting your private key. I don't know what what, the, what on earth was I thinking. Uh, you're going to put the public key in for crying out loud. So ID Arsa dot pub. I don't know. I've done this a hundred times. I always generate keys and I don't know. I guess mistakes can happen to anyone. So just uh, cut out the arsa.pub and let's go ahead and recopy this because the private key is not supposed to leave your computer in the first place and let's go ahead and paste this one and then click on add SSH so I'm gonna leave this actually in the tutorial and in the course uh, just so that you can learn from my mistakes this was a this was a pretty stupid mistake okay so just select it and that's it and the demo key the key that you create will stay here permanently until you actually delete it so just go ahead and select that key this is very important to make because you don't do not want to be logging into your server the first time around with a password uh, the passwords can be rather long that they give and it's kind of difficult to type in and plus this is way more secure so just one droplet and we're going to name this one demo uh, it's arbitrary how you wish to name your key and your droplet, it doesn't really matter. So let's go ahead and click on create. And it's being created. That uh, should be fairly fast. The key log is actually the server that I was using for testing the for testing purposes of uh, prior to actually beginning this tutorial, because I really needed to make sure that all of this actually works. And I did encounter a ton load of errors, but I have fixed all of them. Okay, so this is the IP ups. This is the IP address that I got. So just go ahead and copy that. There's a button here, literally, when you go over it. Just click on copy, minimize this, clear the screen here, type in SSH space root at, and then control shift V, press enter, type in yes here and you will log into the server. This is the most secure login procedure that you can have. I mean, obviously there are a lot of uh, policies that you can create, but it, this is far, far, far more secure than actually just logging in with a password. It is far more secure to log in with a key. Okay, so let's just do some quick uh, configuration of our server. First things first, do pass wd and set the password for root uh, you can set it to whatever you want I'm not going to set it to anything complex now it says that the bad password that the password is bad but it's fine I guess because I am 
going to disable uh, I'm going to disable password login okay so VIM is not installed by default doesn't matter I don't feel like installing it now I'm just gonna use VI so just type in VI slash Etsy SSH SSHD underscore config and where it says port here press I and you basically just press escape then you press I you enter insert mode and then you can insert things so I'm just going to change the port to 60,001 then I'm going to press escape and then I'm going to press a colon and then I'm going to press a W and press enter to remember the changes okay so now I need to go down 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 uh, down 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 I need to disable password logins I don't uh, permit password authentication. Yep, there we go. Uh, password authentication, yes. So this is just, uh, I'm not sure what the default one is, but it doesn't matter. I like to be certain of things. I press no. So in order to insert, you just press escape and then I, and then you're in the insert mode. So password authentication, change this to no. So no, so you cannot log in with a password. And you can like comment this up, sorry. You can comment this line out. So apparently by default password authentication is allowed. So just comment out this line and reinstate this line and then just say no here or just change this yes to no, whatever, it doesn't matter. You can do the same thing that I did. Then press escape, shift, uh, then colon, then WQ, to write and to quit and press enter and then type in system CTL restart SSHD. Okay, so I have restarted. I'm going to exit now and I'm going to attempt to log in again and it says connection refused. Okay, so dash P 60,001. So that is the port which I have opened. And there you go, I have indeed logged in without any sort of problems of whatsoever. Keep in mind that the firewall is still not running. So the next thing that I need to do is install a web server. So let's go ahead and type in yum install httpd. Uh, should be fairly fast. Yes. Okay, so the web server is installed. Let's see the status. System CTL status HTTPD. Okay, it's not running. Let's go ahead and start it. And now we can actually just take this IP address, copy it, and paste it here into the browser. And there you go. It says testing one, two, three. Uh, blah, 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 the web server is indeed functional and running. It is, it is fully operational, no problems there. Now, the next thing that we need to do is bring our firewall up and configure it. So if I type in system CTL status firewall D, okay, it's off. So we just need to enable it. Just because your firewall is off, that doesn't mean that your computer is com completely exposed. In fact, firewalls are predominantly used to actually uh, allow traffic, allow certain forms of traffic, because by default, no traffic is allowed. Anyway, uh, let's go ahead and type in, <clears throat> depending on the how, how the system is configured, usually no traffic is allowed, but as I said, depending on how the system is configured. So if I type in firewall dash cmd dash dash add dash port uh, equals 60,001 slash tcp, this is not going to work as it says that the firewall is not running. So system ctl start firewall D and then repeat the command but that type in dash dash permanent 
Okay, so success, and I just need one more port, which is port 80. And then I need to type in firewall-cmd-reload. Let's go ahead and exit and see if we can actually log back in. Yes, we can log back in, no problems. Can we refresh the site? Yes, we can refresh the site, so everything is working, it's fine and dandy. So we have successfully configured our server to actually place the keylogger on from which our script can actually download it from and then install it. In the next in the next tutorial, I'll show you how to actually upload the keylogger here, how to pull it from the virtual machine, put it on your host machine, and then from there push it on to the push it onto the cloud server.